All right, we are recording, and welcome back to the podcast. Today we are we are we have a very special guest. We have Fatal Glitch. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Been busy, but you know, living life. Living life. Uh, you are you working or are you full time content right now? I'm actually full time. Uh, I was recently presented with an opportunity. Um, that uh that blessed me but prior to to that kind of breaking point um i was doing valet but i got uh i got laid off i got fired um for something dumb as hell but <laughs> yeah that was that was four or five months ago maybe um maybe a little more recent but it kind of forced me into full-time content so i've just been doing doing that full-time ever since and how how do you feel about that like uh, at first, I felt it felt good to finally be able to like full focus um, mm -hmm. because prior I was like putting a lot into this, but I was also working the overnight shifts. So my sleep schedule was, it was like really, really messed up. Um, but ever since switching, like it felt good to finally see the sun again, be awake during the day. Um, it also kind of like ignited a fire because um prior to getting fired i was since i was up all night it was really really difficult to like network properly and be yeah. able be able to like talk and like collaborate um so when i finally was like awake during the day and i fixed my sleep schedule it was like it just it kind of made everything a little bit easier um so it was good it was good the transition was it was exciting but a little difficult um my girlfriend kind of took the the brunt end of of just like finances because obviously like between twitch and coaching um on metify i was only making about half as what i was uh half as much as i was with both combined so i lost about half my income but my free time um kind of freed up a little bit so i was helping more around the house and and stuff like that yeah so you, yeah you just do you live you live with your girlfriend yeah yeah we've lived together for three years i think Nice. Yeah, uh, nice. I think, I think there's, there's, you kind of got not necessarily forced into it. Like, obviously, if you wanted to go get another job, you could do it. But you had that decision when, or uh, at that point, to either go full time or was there any fear in the decision to go full time? the the decision actually kind of like like i never really decided it just worked out that way because initially what ended up happening was um we knew that we were going to be moving because we just we just recently moved um like an hour away um so the idea was okay i'm gonna look for something like at least something to take up like half that time part-time like i was before um so I was looking uh, for more like remote jobs because I did want to work at work from home. I didn't want to have to like leave the house as much. So I was looking for stuff kind of like in esports, uh, maybe content management or just like social media management. And it was applying in like those areas. Um, nothing ever bit. And so I was thinking more of like, OK, maybe I do need to go out. But then she had told me she was like, I'm going to apply for a position out there. And if I like because she's a nurse. So she was like, I'm going to apply for a hospital out to where we're moving. And if I end up getting one, we're just going to move early. So hold off. So I did. I hold off. And the closer it got, even though she never ended up getting a, um, a job um, out here with a hospital, um, the closer it got, the, the less reasonable it seemed to actually get something because then I would have only been there for like a month or like two months. And it's like I worked there for two months and I'm like, hey, I got to go. I'm moving. So yeah. it just made less sense. Uh, so it just like. As time went on, uh, the more I realized, like, okay, like, it, even if I do have to worry about it, like, there's no point in doing anything about it until we move. Um, and it was a month before we did move that I had that opportunity um, uh, and ended up signing a contract for something. So it's like, now I'm in a position where I can fully focus on this and put my full effort into it. Yeah. Whereas uh, I was doing that before, but the um, the return wasn't there. But now the return has is there so yeah i uh, i just think i think there is i think it's really interesting when people make that decision when it's not 
fully in front of them. Like, mm. it's not a sure thing. Because even if it is a sure thing, content and, you know, TikTok or Twitch, there's always going to be a moment in a year, at least one, where you're thinking, like, either the numbers are down, you're like, can I sustain this? Or you're just thinking, can you sustain this? It is a very scary thought to get into where I've had plenty of those, even when my content was, you know, thriving. It's just like, am I always going to have this? And like, am I always going to be in it? Like if the shift change or the tide changes, am I going to be riding that wave or did I, did I just miss it? Like, do you, do you have those thoughts? Yeah, it's hard. Um, it, it was especially hard with, uh, like Twitch income. Um, at the beginning of this year, my Twitch income was actually like booming. Um, at, but Twitch is so fickle. Uh, I had a, um, I had a mod, like a former mod or a former like top donor. Um, that was a big part of the income that I was getting at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, that got caught in my Discord, like doing some such shit. So it's like after that the numbers started to kind of go down. Like once I hit partner, even though I wasn't pushing on my platforms, like, Hey, I'm close to partner. Like come watch. I guess it's like a common thing uh, upon the, the viewing community. Um, that's like, when you see someone close to that milestone, you just kind of lurk, even if you don't really enjoy their content or know them, I guess there's people that do that. So, uh, even though I wasn't pushing it that hard, like at one point, you know, I was averaging like a hundred viewers and now I'm kind of like half that. And it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's it's hard. And when you when you think income wise, like, can I sustain this? Um, when it's when it comes to Twitch, nobody can like Twitch is just way too fickle. Um, and if you're not outsourcing your content to other platforms consistently, it's especially going to be really, really difficult. Um, TikTok, like, not that it's hard to be consistent with it, but it's hard to consistently get views if you're not like niche enough. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's why I've been focusing more on YouTube because the, the return is more consistent. Um, you gain that like subscriber and following and it's, it's more, they're more loyal. I would say, I guess I would say that like the YouTube viewers are a lot more loyal than TikTok. So, um, yeah, in my, in my head, it's definitely been like, Oh, like, can I, can I sustain this? Like, it's good now, but how much, yeah. how much better, how much better is it going to be? Or is it going to fall off again? But that's where the, the YouTube grind comes in. Cause like, gives you that kind of sense of security if you can be consistent in that way um because with videos that do well in the beginning like you know they can always fall back into the algorithm even a year later and pop back off and still make you that money so it's it's a little bit less of a of a worry i think that when why i like youtube so much is because i'm not as hard on myself on with youtube like if my if a youtube video got or like a short or something got like 600 views i'd be like okay like not not the greatest but like but like you compare 600 views to tiktok i'm right i'm especially yeah especially uh ratio wise to subscriber count like if you yeah. have like 1k subs and you get 600 views on youtube like that's great yeah like good for you that's that's hard to do yeah. um but on tiktok yeah i think I agree with you. Um, the algorithm on TikTok, like everyone knows how easy it is. So if yeah. a video flops, like it's hard to not um, be hard on yourself. It's like, what could I have done better? But with YouTube, yeah, it is. It's so much more um, like in depth mm -hmm. in terms of like titling, thumbnails, descriptions, ha like tags on TikTok. I haven't, I haven't used a hashtag in one of my videos in like over a year. Yeah. In my video, man, my videos do fine. So like, I think like once you hit that, uh, once you get like that base following, um, like it doesn't even matter on TikTok. Yeah, uh, and I agree. I think, I think that people, everyone kind of has. If you talk to every TikTok creator who probably has like over twenty thousand followers, they're gonna have their formula on why things work, how things work. Uh, everyone kind of has their and maybe a lot of them are overlapping in some regard like everyone wants this quick thing at the beginning where you grab your attention um 
and then you want to have kind of uh you get to the point and then the payoff or whatever the case may be to have a real good retention video what 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 is a structure for you that you find that works so it kind of varies like i've experimented a lot mm -hmm. um one of the one of the first things i usually think about is like the type of content um so there's like a couple of different ways that I structure like a video um, and how I think it'll perform. And that's usually based on whether or not it's part of a series, uh, whether or not it's like informational uh, or if it's like personality is based, like semi funny or maybe like engaging in terms of a conversation. Like maybe I'm bitching about something um, like maybe something that needs to be nerfed in Valorant or like an agent or something. And uh, even if like, I'm wrong or like overreacting. Like I just know it's gonna get that engagement and get people to comment. Um, but my process kind of revolves around that. And then I break it down from there. Uh, there's a friend of mine, um, when I first started content creation before both of us started doing well, he actually now, he works for Riot Games, is Riot Naru. Um, and he's edited for Tarek, for Tiffe, uh, for Plu. Um, for like their TikTok and mm -hmm. him and I would hop in calls and we would go over like strat like video strategies and a lot of stuff that I've learned from him is like stuff that I normally would never think about is like retention rate um in terms of like the first couple seconds of a video so like I come up like my system is like coming up with the the type of video like the the plan the concept and then breaking it down in terms of like do I need to make an intro um like is what is if is what's in the video clear um will it come across like unconfusing or do i need to have some sort of hook for it like someone did this and then this happened or like um actually one thing he said to me was questions raise a really big like um like if you ask a question in the first three seconds the first three seconds matter the most if you ask a question it like causes people to like kind of sit and think to themselves and then stick through to watch the rest of the video mm -hmm. um so I'll break it down into like that into like the first like three to five seconds of the video. Like, do I need to put an intro? Um, what kind of text do I need to have? Um, and then after that, it's like more or less just like cutting up the dead space and making sure the video flows well. Uh, that way people don't just get bored and leave. Um, that's kind of like my system of things. I kind of like, I, I scrapped all the, the titling and the, the, um, the, hashtags uh for tiktok mm -hmm. i kind of scrapped all that a long time ago stopped really worrying about that I, I will more or less try and put some kind of like caption that is all encompassing to the video maybe try and ask a question to get people to comment um depending on the video too sometimes i will be the first to comment and pin it so that way when people go to the comments and they see it, they have something to either reference for more context to the video or have something to like reply to. Uh, but that's kind of like my system. Uh, that's kind of how I think of things. Um, uh, and every, everyone's different, but. Yeah, I, I definitely, I agree with, with everything you said there when it comes to, I, I believe, I've always said the first two seconds are the most important, but you know, the first couple seconds are most important. Mm -hmm. I think what a lot of people do wrong is that they'll, they'll, they might have like the craziest clip ever, but like the first three seconds are them walking into a main on ascent and like, it's just like, there's nothing happening. You don't know what's about to happen. So it's like, oh, this yeah. is just someone just walking, you know? And so you just scroll. Yeah. I it's think a, yeah, it's the most boring like yeah yeah and so i think that people don't think about hooks enough i've i've told my friends all the time like if you can't like get a hook in there good then like what why is someone gonna watch it like why I should agree. someone watch this video everyone does hooks like look at anyone who does Valorant content, like Cam Cam does a hook, like I, you do hooks. Um, I mean, I've, I do hooks every video. Like that's what I think about. And um, 
I just I think, think one one uh, concept that stands out is Nadia too. I don't know if you've seen her yep, from yep, Call of Duty. Zone. Yeah. And that's it's literally it's I think of it as a short movie. Like you got to have the intro. Like if a movie intro is just so boring, it's just you walking into a main. Like why are why would you sit there and be like, I guess I'll watch another hour of this to see what happened. Like, no, you're going right. to be like, hey, let's turn off this movie. And people, there is a structure to TikToks that is proven to work. And I think not enough people, when they're thinking about how they should structure their content, are referencing literally what's on their For You page. Right. Like, everything... When it comes to like food videos is like like loops and right away you do they you know they tell you what you they tell you what you're about to see like let's make chocolate chip cookies and then you're like, like oh yeah, yeah i i like chocolate chip cookies like you should be telling people what they're gonna see or asking them a question get their attention it's an attention grabber and i just think that if you can master that, obviously your content has to, after that has to be has good. To follow. Yeah. But like that is a big part is like getting people to watch and then you got to get people to stay. And then, I mean, if you're good, then they'll rewatch it because, because of something. Um, right. Yeah. There's layers to it and you have yeah. to, you have to start with the first layer before you master the rest. Yeah. And like, I went back um, and did did a little bit of research on. I didn't know that you started on Call of Duty on TikTok, which I also I don't know if you know this about me, but I I was a COD player as well. I was yeah yeah. So I I was interested. When did you start? We'll start. When did you start playing video games? So I've been. I mean, I've been playing games my whole life. Like. Um, I remember back when I was a kid, my mom owned a hair salon and uh, when I'd come home from school or like get dropped off off the bus at her salon, um, she, you know, she'd be busy working and I just, I'd be playing Tomb Raider on the PlayStation one, you know, um, <clears throat> like Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, Pac-Man, like all that, all that stuff, PlayStation two. Uh, I think when I first got into like like really big gaming. I was really into like solo player kind of type stuff, story mm -hmm. games. Um, it was when Black Ops 1 first came out. That was my first Call of Duty. And I'll always say that that Call of Duty is very underrated in terms of like the content that was there uh, because they had the wager games. You could do sticks and stones mm. um, and like everything else. And there yeah. was a money system to it, which made it really like kind of engaging. Like you could gamble and like, um, just kind of like wage your skill against other people. And so it made it really fun. And <clears throat> so that was my first Call of Duty. Uh, I never got the Modern Warfare 2 experience, uh, which I always hear was like one of the best, but mm -hmm. Black Ops 1 was my hooker um, when I first got um, the Xbox 360. And then it went to Modern Warfare 2. And it, like for the years following up until, I want to say black ops 2 i was just like it was a consistent call of duty um you know i tried out some gta uh played some other games here and there but it was i was just a, i was a really big cod guy modern warfare 3 being like one of my favorites and then for three years uh when i was in high school right when i hit about junior year um i was i was a really big hermit i was a really big introvert so what ended up happening was, you know, I started to get a little bit of a of a life outside of video games, like so got into a friend group, started hanging out more outside of school when I finished my homework, um, started to become a little more social. So I didn't play games for like three years. So like I hit like 17, 18, um, graduated high school, went to community college, um, you know, would play here and there, maybe some like zombies with friends or Mortal Kombat 10 when that came out. Um, but it wasn't until I moved to go to ASU down here in the Valley, um, that at some point I got the Xbox series S 
And so when I, because what ended up happening was like when the Xbox One came out, I realized like one, it's expensive. And at first there wasn't like a backwards compatibility. So it's like, I'm mm -hmm. not even going to be able to, I like, I think at first, like you couldn't even join an Xbox One party uh, if you had a 360. So it's like, even if I'm playing with my friends, I can't talk with them. Mm -hmm. So when I didn't upgrade right away and all my friends got the Xbox One, it was like, there's not even any point for me to play games anymore. I can't even play with my friends. Um, so for three years, I didn't play anything. Then I got the Xbox One S. And at some point, like, I was just, I was hooked. Like, I was hooked again. It's like, I didn't play video games for three years. And I was just, I was back into it. Um, then when COVID hit, I built my first computer. And I started back with Call of Duty. You know, Warzone had just recently released. So I was playing with some friends. And then um, my competitive drive came back. I played baseball in high school. I hadn't played sports in a while. And it's like, I want to grind something again. Um, I know that CS was super popular and people would always say uh, that CS was one of those games where if you can be good at it, you can be good at anything. Um, like your mechanics will be really good, uh, your overall aim. So, uh, but it had been out for so long and I just barely got my computer where I was like, I I'm not going to jump into that. Valorant came out. And that's where I transitioned from Call of Duty to... Because Warzone was just... It was pissing me off. My computer could barely handle it because it's so poorly optimized. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Screw this. Uh, I hopped into Valorant. I got obsessed. And I mean, the rest is history. Yeah. I I mean, I think I, I have a similar story when it comes to... Like in high school... Or I played all through middle school and like was uploading YouTube videos. And then when I got to high school, I felt like people were going to find it. And I didn't mm. want that to happen. And so like going into my freshman year, I was like, like, I'm done. I ditched everything. And um, I didn't really play video games. I, you know, what, what happened was that I started dating uh, a girl and I was, and then I realized people didn't really care. Like in my school, like what you did, like, I felt like all the attention was going to be on me, but I was just like another person. So right. I tried to get back into it and I kind of wasn't like, I couldn't like get back into playing video games or anything. But then like COVID happened. Um, and it was, I, I took like two years probably off, like maybe a little bit for Fortnite came back. Um, but yeah, I, I, I also just, kind of got hooked again but i got hooked with modern warfare right like and then i just played an ungodly amount of multiplayer on that game it was just disgusting and and then now <laughs> now we're here i wonder who would have been uh the better multiplayer me or you mm, i was a sniper fatal so oh no you're one of those hard scopers dude or did you quick scope uh, i quick scope Duh. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll right. show. I had to make sure that you know it's respectable, all right? Before we leave this, I'll show you a montage of mine. Okay. All all right. I'll, I'll make you watch it. It's uh, probably like a minute long or something before we get out. Okay. Of this. I'll, I'll I'll make you watch it. But yeah, I just uh I think I I also I had a PC, but I also built my first one in in COVID as well. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I never computer gamed before that, but. I mean, I miss COD, but it's I just not too. the same. It's, it's not, not same. but I'm going to, I give it a chance every year. I, I, I give it a fair shot. This is something, I mean, people, I, I don't think anyone's curious, but like people also don't know like what games I play on a day to day. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't upload games very often or gameplay. Um, but I, I still dabble in some cod sometimes i'll i'll play every every year at least when it releases i'll give i'll give it at least like five days of play time or something right like some good hours in the game before i before i deem it to be really bad which i've done the past couple of years but yeah i haven't touched it in at least like i i would say getting on one night out of like 12 months to play with a friend doesn't count as like like i haven't actually touched call of duty in over a year um do you only I play valorant I, no i mean like i was like 
I've gone through my grind moments where I only play Valorant for a couple of months. But recently, uh, like I, I downloaded Multiverses yesterday. I'm going to start grinding that a little bit. It seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Apex is a really good game. I enjoy that a lot. Um, I want to go but, pro in Apex so bad. It's a, it's a good game. Do you know, do you know Torhe, Voltaic Torhe? Mm-mm. So he, he's uh, on, the, on the Voltaic team. But when I was like a little guy, like... Oh, I don't know, averaging like five, ten viewers maybe. Um, he's a former speedrunner. So he would do like speedrunning on like Mario games or like whatever, or like mm-hmm. Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. And um one day I was like I was aim training. It used to, it was like back in the day where like viewer like my viewer count was so low, it didn't really matter what I played. Mm-hmm. So I was like I had Kovacs uh as the category and I was just aim training and warming up and he raided me with like a hundred viewers and We've been mutuals ever since, and he's like he works on the Voltaic team. Voltaic is like an aim training community uh, where they create like scenarios and benchmarks and stuff, and help people improve in the, like their raw their raw aim and mechanics. And he's really really good at Apex. Like his aim is insane. He's put a lot of time into like aim training. And I mean, I don't know like if he's like pro level, but I mean, dude, it's it's crazy. The game's fun. It's fun to watch people who are really good at aiming. So. Yeah. And you kind of, you know, you kind of look like him, if anything. Like, yeah. Kind of remind me of him. So, I mean, like, <laughs> hey, bro, you could be Torhe 2.0. <laughs> Go pro, you know? Yeah, that's fine. Apex is a My, good game. Yeah, like, when, when the game first came out, I definitely, I was really above average. Like, I, I dropped, like, a, a 4K 20, like, right when the game came out. And, like, so I was, like, I was kind of uh, the the higher percentage of players at the beginning mm-hmm. but then i just stopped playing and then everyone i mean it's just like fortnite you just you kind of stop for a little bit and then you come back and everyone's just better than you and you're like yeah like but i don't know i i definitely um it's kind of one of my that's going to be my story is i could have gotten pro you know yeah my, if you would have stuck with it from yeah. the beginning to my kids i don't know i could have been an apex pro but i if i if i stuck with it be like yo kids listen this was the stats of my first ever game played yeah i had it in the bag but i, I fumbled i was a i was a wraith main before it was cool so uh, i've never i've never enjoyed playing wraith i don't really i i, I uh i get mad at people because i don't think they play play it right so right Uh, yeah it's kind of like just like using i mean there's probably a character in every game where you're just like you're not using that ability right so stop doing that like i would just rather have you play anyone else that's funny um gotta hydrate yeah that's i my biggest thing was i wanted to find the biggest water bottle i could and you have a bigger water bottle than me you gotta get on my level. It's not the only thing bigger I've got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um what when did you start like streaming? Because you you talked us through the gaming part, but like when's content creation and streaming come into play? When I I've had some friends that have dabbled in it. Um and when they when I saw them you know, doing it. Uh, one of my friends actually, he was like semi popular on Blackout when Blackout was popular mm-hmm. um, when it first came out, and he streamed on Mixer. Um, so I mean, like I had known about it, I'd never really taken it serious or thought like, oh hey, I can do that. I always looked at it as like, oh, that seems fun. You know what I mean? Like, seems like a good time. Uh, I originally was on Mixer, um, kind of starting out on my Xbox. It was when I built my computer um, at the start of COVID is when I switched to Twitch and started to kind of take it a little more seriously, uh, almost to the point that I ruined some relationships. Like I, I was pretty deep into it. Um, but uh, once I figured out that balance after, after a while, um, yeah, I would say like 2020, like early 2020 is like when I s- like started to really, really take it serious. I went from Mixer to Twitch and then, I started to kind of figure all that stuff out and 
That's kind of just like the start of it. Um, I had always thought to myself, like, hey, I want to work for myself. I want to work from home. So when I was going to school, I was going for like, I do like computers. So I was going for software engineering. Um, I enjoyed some of the coding classes. Uh, Wait, do you code? Or I I it, have never been like the best at it. Um, the classes that I took, you know, like Java, um, C plus plus, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like it was it was fun. Um, the Java was the most fun, um, just because the UI is like it has its own garbage collection, um, and I don't know, like I don't know, the UI was just a little more fun for me. But the beginning classes, that's what that's what they were. It was fun. So yeah. as I got to like junior senior level like classes and I started to take like some of the math that I just didn't care about or, um, and all that stuff. I don't know somewhere along the line, like I just, I dropped out. Um, I just, I didn't enjoy it. I also started to think more of like, even if I do kind of work from home, which was the ultimate goal, um, I wouldn't really be working for myself. Uh, I'd either be hired on by like a company and be taking on like the work that, that, that they have come in, or I would be like a private contractor in terms of like building websites or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and even then there's, even though there's some creative freedom in that, I'm still kind of like making a product for other people and not really like making what I want. Yeah. Um, and I know that doesn't entirely hold true, but I don't know. Like when I started to make content, um, I, I taught myself, I feel I felt like I taught myself more on YouTube in terms of like the Adobe products and editing and Photoshop, Premiere Pro. I felt it felt more rewarding learning all that stuff by myself than it did learning anything when I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I kind of realized I was like, I, I started to kind of get in my own head. I was like, what do I do? Like, I could go back to college later and learn the Adobe products, but I mean, like, what's the point? Everything I've learned, I've learned online. So I could go and take classes and master it, but like, will that ruin the fun? Like, will it make me not want to like pursue that? Because at first it was like, do I become more of an editor uh, or more of an editor or keep pursuing this path? Um, and then I, and then I thought to myself like, okay, if I become an editor, that's basically doing the same thing that, I didn't want to do in the first place with coding. Like I'm editing for other people, mm -hmm. um, not really making what I made, want to make. It's like, I get to like make my vision, but um, I don't know. I just didn't have the full control that I wanted. So I don't know. It was a, it was a really weird process for me. Um, but yeah, once I started streaming, I don't know, everything kind of changed. I never, I never would have imagined this path for myself ever. Mm hmm. I've been playing I, games for years and I never even really know, knew that it was uh, like a thing until yeah. I started. I remember like, I think, I think a lot of people think about going the editor route. I think because mm. I never knew if, um, cause I've been, I was doing it for so long. Like I literally have videos from 2011 on YouTube of me trying to do this stuff. And which I mean, I was really young, but I knew that this is what I wanted to do for so right. long. Um, but I think that I didn't know if I that if if I just wanted to be surrounded by it, or mm -hmm. if I wanted to be the face of it. And I mean, the face of it, you know, it has its perks. It's cool. Um, but there is also, I mean, there's give and take for every every job and every position that you're gonna find yourself 100%. in but like is your personality i always think is my personality fit for this like i don't really show my like i just talk and like yeah not a lot of like emotion or yeah like it's not like like i personally like i don't think you have a bland personality i just like you're a very serious person you're like in like you're intrigued in other people's mm -hmm. um like lives um and I think that has its own um, value, Yeah, I guess it'd be the word. Yeah, uh, But I know a lot of people think the way you do in terms of like, do I have the personality for it? And like, I think it's so subjective because you can like learn. Mm -hmm. Like pe people don't understand that you can learn to talk. Like if, when you first start streaming, it's like people are really bad at talking to chat and like interacting and reading that. It's like, you have to learn that. You have to 
um, like practice it. Um, same thing with like any other skill, like me personally, I know like I rage, I'm pretty interactive, I'm pretty like sus and jokey. But when I think about myself, like, I don't think that I'm the most entertaining person. And uh, when I, I mean, I know that's not entirely true. Like people watch me for a reason, but mm -hmm. I also know that like, I could go and take improv classes and like, learn that I could uh, start practicing doing some kind of voice acting like some people have innate talent for it, but it's also something that you can like practice and learn. Even if you're not the best at it, like it's something that you could use for some level of entertainment. Yeah. And I, I feel that with um, right away starting, starting a podcast, like not, it's not an easy thing to, to carry on a conversation and like actually have it go somewhere for an hour. Like, it, like with streaming as well, if you're the only person on live, like you're like, there's no call. There's no like other person to talk to. A lot of people don't do that when they're starting out because like if there's no chats or whatever, then there's just a lot of like, are you just going to talk to yourself? Like without yeah. like, yeah, you are talking. Space. Yeah. Just like knowing how to, if someone does come in and they don't chat, like how are you going to capture their attention without them having to actually chat and like right. some people will have that like right away where they're just entertaining just to watch play video games whether you're chatting or not and like but yeah i i do feel like you can learn that because i felt like i've learned how to actually carry on conversations better and exactly and kind of try to get sound bites without making it too forced or you know whatever the mm. case may be um what did how did you was that a natural thing for you right away to 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 be n like no dead space or whatever like did you try to fill that walk definitely that? definitely not it wasn't something that i inherently tried to work on um i think so at first for me um it definitely it was bad like it's really bad. Um, I know, like I notice, I would talk to other people, or I would hear or like watch like uh, advice videos on YouTube, some Harris Heller stuff like that. It's like <laughs> engaging. Talk to your chats, like. Um, but all that would go through my head is like I feel like it's easier to practice when you actually have that to talk to. Um, I was really bad at just saying stuff to no one. Um, I think along the line, though, when I started to make external content, um, when people started to actually come through, I picked it up pretty quick. So like as my TikTok started to grow and people started to like tune in, that's when I started to pick up the skill of like, okay, I need to look over and not ignore my chat. Uh, but at first, no, 100% not. Um, it, it, it was pretty difficult. I would like I'd look over sometimes and be like, oh shit, this person said something and I'd reply and then I'd be like, oh, they're probably not even here anymore because it probably took too long. Mm -hmm. I feel like every, everyone kind of has that those, those moments um, when they're first starting out. Um, I don't know. I don't really know when it clicked. Um, it was just kind of like a slow and gradual process where I just eventually got better at it. Um, but it was definitely something that I noticed for sure. And I mm -hmm. notice a lot of other people when I tune into smaller people's streams, you know, I, I notice I'm struggling with the same thing. Yeah. I definitely, I mean, I've tried to be a streamer um, before and just having, I was always embarrassed about having low viewers. Like, yeah. And like, I felt like people were sitting on the following tab, not clicking on my stream, but looking at how many viewers I had and be like, this guy, I can't, like, he's really streaming to one person. People put too much, too, too much value, like even internally, um, like outside of like other people and like judging other people or seeing where they're at, like internally, like people just put way too much value in numbers. It's something I've been struggling with a lot recently as well. Um, I know Twitch is fickle, but when I see my numbers compared to like what they used to be, I just try to remind myself, like, I mean, in general, it's just a shit platform um, in terms of like everything else, uh, like what everything else offers. Um, the revenue split or the sub split the, is what gets me. 
the revenue split, the problems they have internally, the just like overall fairness and like how much, um, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, they're, yeah, recommendation a... system like that you know they have a whole bunch of stuff um and you could go on and on about yeah. all of it but mm -hmm. i don't know i i feel like i feel like growing though like once you get to a certain point i, th I think like one of the biggest problems at least for me is like networking um and like trying to i don't think that i'm unvaluable but at the same time like if I want to collab with somebody, if I think of it in a business sense, yes, I might enjoy them. They might be my friend, but everyone like values their time differently. So if I don't offer any sort of value or they might not be able to get a lot of content content out of me or vice versa, I don't know. I just, it's hard. It's hard to like, it's hard to not take it. Like you're getting egoed. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely yeah. taken it that way before. Yeah. It's it's hard, man. It's hard. And like it's also it's also really hard to think of it in like if you like somebody and you're mutuals with them. Um and even if you don't feel like you're valued to them uh in that way, like content way. I just I worry in the future trying to be like I have mutuals and I worry in the future that like even though I talk to them here or there or um like on Twitter, Discord, whatever, as I grow, it's like at what point do then they reach out to me or finally say yes uh to like a collab stream or doing something together? How do I internally not think to myself like, oh, you only want me because it's like beneficial to you now? Like we've been mutuals for this long and it's like now you're now I'm worth it. It's like I understand the numbers game and I get it, but I also am like worried at not making that an awkward conversation or like not feeling awkward inside when that happens. I don't know. I feel like that's a struggle for me. I, that's 100%. Like there's this one person that if, if I started to blow up and then they're like, I want to be on your podcast, I don't know if I could do it because because of that exact reason that they literally told me and like I get it but at the same time like coming out and saying it like you could have just said no but saying it's not worth my time is like I was like okay like I that's fucked yeah and I I get no's all the time but like exactly what you're saying that I don't think that's like a bad like obviously if it's someone who like you admire and you respect you're gonna be like yeah i want to do that but at the same time i have this feeling now right yeah it's it's hard it's hard to deal with there's like a, a level of anxiety because mm -hmm. i mean like networking is a huge part of growing too like yeah, um it's literally anybody wider, yeah. yeah any part at any like at any point in time all it takes is like someone who's a little bit bigger than you with just a little more eyes, right? And like one tiny collab or one tiny moment and people all of a sudden can be like, oh, I really like this person or like even something like this, right? Like if like a YouTube video on like this podcast blows up, like both of our viewers combined. And it's like sometimes that's all it takes. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, I, I understand from like a bigger creator's point of view where it's like, I have the potential and I have the viewership or the platform to present that opportunity to other people lower than me. But I also uh, understand like, is, do I have the time to uh, like put effort into that with little return on my end, mm -hmm. given like their size. And I don't, I, I, f I feel like um, from my perspective, right? Like as I grow, um, I'll make sure if anyone, ever reaches out to me in that way there's going to be a lot of research done into like how much effort they're actually putting in because a lot of people will be like hey let's play um even with where i'm at right now it's like hey let's play um let's do this let's do that and it's like okay let's go to your platforms like how many times are you posting a day how much effort are you actually putting into your videos are they just clips are they edited uh like are you putting effort into like experimenting stuff like that and i feel like from what i see between like my mutuals there's not a lot of like thought behind that 
people just see like, oh, hey, you're not where I'm at. So you're not putting in the effort. And I just, I don't think it's that black and white. Yeah. So I feel like people put in the same amount of effort, um, but the return comes in waves. Um, whereas like some one person may be like, they may get a little lucky, um, but at the same time they're entertaining and one person may be entertaining, but they're just not as lucky or they just haven't gotten that big break yet. Um, but people just look at it like way too black and white. I feel like. Mm -hmm. What do you, what's the biggest excuse you give yourself or you used to give yourself or. Biggest excuse. Um, I don't know. I've been pretty hard on myself. I, I don't know. I feel like excuse wise, the only excuse I ever gave was like, if I needed to do stuff like a certain day, um, or if I needed to edit, I'd be like, not, not that I would ever excuse myself. I would just procrastinate, I guess. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like, I don't, when I first started, I told myself, uh, I would watch a lot of Harris Hell, Hell, Harris Heller videos and I got a pretty realist, pretty realistic sense in terms of like how long this kind of stuff can actually take. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, I told myself four years, if by four, like four years time, like obviously like keep working and stuff, but if by four years time, I'm not making enough to even cut down on a real job and work half time. And then the other half of my income be from content quit. Um, and I had already reached that milestone by the two year mark. So I feel like I really don't give myself excuses a lot though. Like I, I'm, I'm pretty hard on myself. Like I'm going to Italy in a week and a half for two weeks and I am stressing because like you would think that that vacation time is like well-deserved, well-earned, um, like take it, enjoy it. But in my mind, it's like, that's two weeks. I can't, like, I can't work. I have to outsource all my work to other people. I have to pay them, um, which I've been doing anyway, but it's like, now I have little to no control. I'm in a different time zone. If something needs to be done, I might not be able to, to address it right away. And it's like, that's like, my mind is like 24 seven constant work. Uh, and I, I, I would say I probably don't give myself as many breaks as I should. Um, and if I do give myself, it's maybe a day. Like, and then the next day I'm like back on that, back on my shit. Yeah. Um, how do you, what about, what about you? I was going to say, um, I don't know. I feel like there was like, there was times where I just would put off like, yeah, procrastination. Um, I think I went for so long with like, just absolutely every single day every second of every single day to the point where i kind of burnt out a little bit so like trying to get back in like this is my first podcast in a month i mean i right. did i did move i'm in a you know i got an apartment but like i don't know i was just there's that and then like you know before i just I wouldn't do things and just kind of give myself little excuses to not do it. Like do it tomorrow. Like, Oh, I still have, you know, X amount of time to get this thing done or whatever the case may be. And so I, I think the lack of urgency in myself. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause I'm actually, I'm, or good. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say that just reminds me, I guess like, it's not really an excuse. Uh, and it's kind of like tacky, but I guess like the, if I were to give a biggest excuse, it would be like playing games. Cause like part of my brand was getting better at the game. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there were times where like, you know, I could have been editing a video, but I was playing Valorant instead. And it's like, I would tell myself like, I'm trying to get immortal. So it's like, if I'm trying to get immortal, like once I hit immortal, then I can use that as like leverage to start coaching informational people will start to kind of take me serious a little bit more. Yeah. So it was like, it was an excuse, but it wasn't an excuse because like working towards that was part of my success in the first place. And I knew that. Um, so there was like that, but yeah. Um, do you, how does, what do you think about like certain trends on TikTok and then people who really are just, I don't like this term, but kind of just sheep when it comes to valorant TikTok. trends yeah because people like 
like us, uh, I mean, they're, they're, like we do do trends in certain ways and like we may twist a trend or something um, and put our little spin on it. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, there's, there's a certain way that we paved our own path, we style of content or whatever. But there are people in like, who want that quick quick fix of of a little hit of virality a little hit of dopamine yeah what do you what do you think about that i mean i think it's just like you said it's just they're looking for a quick fix um and like back to tanaru um like my my editor friend like we've talked a lot and it's like yeah trends get views but you know you're looking for the easy way out you're not you're not you're not niching yourself a little bit. Um, you're not like, uh, I don't know, I guess like getting yourself out there in terms of um, becoming your own kind of like unique creator. You're just, you're following the wave. And I don't think inherently it's a bad thing because like trends are fun. Mm-hmm. But like, if you're looking for the easy way out, you know, you're just not gonna get anywhere. And I think that goes with like updates, like update creators. Um, one, I mean, he's a friend and he does make unique content. Um, Darth shadow, Darth shadow TV. He's a, he's a valor. He's a friend. And he does like, he, he has some very unique videos. He's made some funny videos. Um, but you know, he'll do some, some update type stuff. And I'm like, why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you get views, but do you really get like the engagement or the followers you need from that? Like in terms of like bringing that from TikTok to Twitch. And I think one thing that also, um, w- one thing that also people don't understand in the Hertz is like, if you do skit type videos um, that are funny, they might get views, but you have to do them in a way where people can identify this is Dark Shadow or like this is this person, this is that person. If it's just a skit with no real voices really, and it's just like text, the video might blow up and do well. You might get some followers here and there, but like do people know like if they see that video again or if they see a similar type of video do they know it's you do they know who it's coming from Mm -hmm. and i think people struggle really like making that type of content and trying to like um put their own personality and put their own branding in it uh where it translates into like a a better level of growth like for them uh, where people can recognize that it is their content um and it's like it's hard um but that, like I, like you were saying earlier, like the easy fix, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just not, it gets views, but do you really like feel rewarded? You know? I feel like people who, cause like in a way you're from when you started to like where you are now, like you kind of have like a little bit of a, a theme, like you're, there's clips or you're saying something like, you're gonna when you follow fatal glitch you're gonna get this certain thing it might swerve a little bit be a little bit different but Mm -hmm. you you know you're playing valorant you're showing them how to do something or uh, a gameplay or like something you did on stream like it's your personality it's your content and people follow you because you are who you are but when Mm -hmm. you do certain things like skits or update videos or something like that and you do all sorts of types of videos and say the skit blows up, but like you really like doing the news videos and then you like, it's hard because, oh, I'm following this person cause I want to see more skits. Like I want to see this video again, just different, but mm. then you don't get that all the time. So that's something that like, you don't want to dig yourself a hole and cover it. Like, Right. You, if you dig too deep, you're not gonna be able to get out. And all these other videos that you're really passionate about, where you really love making, they're not gonna do as well, and you're not gonna feel that way. So like, you really gotta plan, and like, you can get out of the hole, but it's gonna take a lot longer because, you yep. know, you're kind of put into this lane of content when, like, in the algorithm, they're gonna show it to people. These... Expect. Yeah, and so, I just think I've talked with so many creators, like, what whole like can you put yourself in that is sustainable like like do you think about like what you want to be making and like how like 
uh, I feel like what direction you want to yeah, go. Yeah. 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 I'm just trying to spit that out. Do you, do you think about that? I do. Yeah. Um, when I first started, like my first initial TikTok wave, um, was like mistakes you make with your agent. Yep. So like, I, like I had had some COD videos blow up here and there, but when I started Valorant, it was kind of like stream moments. And then like, I made that series mistakes you make with your agent. And like, you know, I was like gold when I started the series. So I was just kind of like speaking, like I made it in a way where it's like, I'm speaking the obvious, but I'm also speaking out of frustration of like what I see my teammates don't do. So it made it relatable. Mm -hmm. And I understood that. Um, and it wasn't like I was giving the most in-depth tips where it's like, I needed to be a high rank to speak that. Like I was speaking from a very common spoken perspective, um, like common knowledge. And it helped with the first initial wave after that series was over because I went with every agent. I struggled in thinking of like another way to like another unique thing. So like I went through like waves where it's like, okay, like stream moment here. And then I started to do skin reviews uh, where I'd like, I would review skins. I'd give like my top five best, my top five worst. And I actually had a lot of those videos do really well, like 300, 400,000 views. Uh, where like I give my top five best phantom skins or worst phantom skins. Um, and I thought of those videos in a way of like, okay, I need to one, make it engaging. So like I would throw in skins where skins in there that I knew people would like that I didn't like. Um, whereas like for my phantom video, for example, I said the singularity phantom is like the number one worst phantom skin, which I hold true. It's like the whiff master 9,000. I don't, I don't like it. I whiff with that guy. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> agree or not, um, <laughs> but no, like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, people are want to want to see what I want to say, but I'm also trying to speak in a way that's unique to me where like, if I'm roasting the skin, um, I'm doing it like in my own personality. Um, after the skin videos were over, like I struggled again. I'm like, I need to go in the, in the direction of no matter what I do, people follow me because it's me. They like my personality. They like maybe what I have to say. They agree, disagree, whatever. I'm trying to make the videos more engaging. So um, I went through a process of like series here, series there, and started to try and more think of like, okay, now I need to like brand myself, like brand my videos as Fatal, as Fatal Glitch, um, and create more of like a, a personality around myself that people want to follow. Um, that's the direction that I've been trying to go. And I mean, it's like, it's been slow, but it's been growing. Um, especially with like the YouTube stuff, like just trying to make a name for myself, but it's difficult. It's difficult mm -hmm. for sure. Cause I don't want to fall in like, like you said, a hole. Uh, one example that I can, uh, think of is Dragon Mar. Um, and he recently came back to streaming, but on YouTube for the longest time, he was like the uh the coaching guy on youtube um before he took a break and one of his like final videos before he came back like his goodbye video was like i've fallen into this hole where it's like i don't enjoy making coaching content as much as i used to and it's kind of draining and like repetitive and that's one thing like once i saw that i started to think more to myself like okay what lane do i want to go into where I don't get stuck doing the same thing over and over again. So one, th one thought I have in my head always is focus on personality, focus on like being able to um, grow in a way where no matter what game I'm playing, no matter what I'm doing, people want to watch me for me. That way, if I ever get bored of Valorant, I can go to Apex. If I ever get bored of Apex, like I can go to a game and even if my viewership dips a little bit, um, people will follow me just because mm -hmm. um and that's the lane i want to go like i want to go the more mainstream route uh even if i don't end up ever being as big as like pokemon tim the tap man ninja like i become kind of like a, a public figure that it doesn't really matter what i'm doing like i'm relatable mm -hmm. um and it's like my personality i always tell people i don't think it's a good idea to play just one agent and be known for that one agent because i feel like at some point like i always see it in like flex ninja's chat where they're like play omen play omen and he's like i don't want to play omen right now 
And like, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's good to give like tips if like, you know, an agent really well, but like, I mean, you don't think TN6 is going to play chamber, chamber for the rest of, his, rest of his life. Like I, he's good with his chamber set up setups. Yeah. He's yeah. Uh, I think he's done a good job. Oh though, yeah. At like 100%. At like uh, at least like diversifying because like he's like the chamber guy right but like people go to his stream and even if he's not playing chamber he's he's a he's a character for sure yeah um, i i don't think that he's like one of those that he's like, just stuck yeah is doing anything wrong i just think that there are certain things that you sh if you could stray away from and like work on something else that maybe you should i mean if you really want to do something just do it but like you also got to think, like, do you really want to be, like, this guy, that guy forever? Yeah. Yeah, I go into Flex's chat sometimes, too, and people would be like, chat's dead. I'm like, you guys are dicks. Like, <laughs> you know, they'd be like, play Omen. It's like, I mean, he's been a little inconsistent with the YouTube. I know he's been looking for an editor, and I feel like that plays a large part in, in um, I don't know, just, like, getting more eyes on you, whether or not he's playing Omen or not, but... Mm -hmm. yeah it, it it is hard to to get yourself stuck in that way i know Exter, he's had a lot of success recently with like his yoru plays and stuff mm -hmm. um but i've seen some videos too where he's like i don't even have to play yoru i can play whoever and i still dominate and he's like dunking on these kids on like viper or some shit um and i think that's good i think it's good to like put it out there that no matter who you're playing like you're still good at the game like you're still a top player mm -hmm. um but it's hard when you're playing like uh, as many hours as flex, like you go on a lost streak and you're just tilt queuing on stream. It's it's <laughs> you go from radiant to immortal one in one stream and it's like uh, it's fucking it makes it hard to want to do anything. <laughs> so I don't I don't blame them at all. But um, I think we're we're gonna wrap this up here. I think this is a a good place to just uh to end this. Uh, I appreciate you coming on and talking with me. That's fun. I like these. I like these things. Yeah, I do want to. I I'm gonna try to do more volume of of them. So maybe we'll circle back around in a couple months and or or any time you can. Touch come, pace. Yeah, we can uh, do another one of these. I I like talking with people and then I like catching up with people. So. Um, okay uh yeah like i said i appreciate you i appreciate everyone for watching and i will see you guys next time peace